We are trying out some KFC thing for an hour. Why? Well, because I guess it's a combination of my own self-loathing and my Catholic upbringing that I feel like I do have to punish myself for enjoying things from time to time. But you know that. I've, I've mentioned that from time to time. Uh, some We have to do some things to make me feel bad so I can then don't I don't have to feel guilty about feel about liking about doing good things in the future uh, so that's what this is what we're that's what this is here and maybe you can join me uh, in the misery and uh, we'll share it together they say misery loves company and you know what misery also loves fried chicken uh, preferably better fried chicken than KFC, but uh, KFC is what's on the menu as we're playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders. This was a visual novel released in 2019. It's a game that was commissioned by KFC. Why? Because apparently they wanted... they. Well, I mean, you know, they wanted to get the Colonel back into the public awareness or something? Hell, I don't know. We're gonna start a new game. No. You sleep as softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest studio apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Throw the clock out the window. You sleep through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders, who is dead. So we won't even- we won't- we'll try not to think about what it means that you would have met him if you went to school. I guess we'll try it again. What is it- what is it loading, by the way? Like, this can't be real load time. This has to be simulated load time. I stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits me at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Oh yes, waking up and staring at the ceiling, just thinking about if it's worth it to get out of bed. I hear you. Your mind begins- Oh, I, my, oh, I absolutely hear you. Where's my want mind wandering to? Who will be there? What will I cook? What should I wear? Time begins to fly by, and I find that my imagination is getting away from me. I'll daydream a bit. It's here, finally, my first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet, and turn them into dishes. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. Well, since I'm already late, I guess I can't go at all, you know? Maybe I'll just wait till tomorrow, the second day, then I'll show up on time. I think that's a good plan. We are, are we eating KFC for breakfast? Yikes! We're in such a hurry that we forgot to put on pants. I'm sorry, I mean deodorant before running out the door. I'm sweating buckets as I rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, I gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorable, awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, No. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm because I sure am. Excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that. This morning I made breakfast for myself, but when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food because it wasn't KFC. What was I thinking eating something aside from KFC? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents. She's held herself to a very high standard, but could never meet the standard of KFC chains all the world over. Ever since we were little babies eating KFC together, you rescued me from that quicksand box. It's clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person that I know. You're going to eat a lot of KFC. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. It sounds like a very compressed course. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. 
This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she vomited KFC up into the other person's mouth. It was extremely hot. I'll change the subject. It's hard to see Miriam like this and frankly quite exhausting. Yes, it is exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, you try and change the subject to something more interesting. All summer, you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic mystery student who is enrolled at this school. No, you haven't. That doesn't happen. That's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine. What about this mystery student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Uh -huh. Oh, get this. His name is Harland, and he's no ordinary student. They say his dick is actually a piece of KFC. Can you imagine? I can't believe it. It's... did he... really? Is anyone... can anyone confirm this? It would line up with some of the other rumors. Like, I heard that one time he fought a bear and fed him the KFC dick, and then it grew back, and the bear was stuffed full of KFC. Who knows where it came from? I mean, it keeps growing back. You both sigh thinking about this chicken dick. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks my books and custom engraving measuring spoons out of my hands and onto the ground. Hey... It's Ashley, my arch-rival. She's totally evil, and I can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get all the chicken she wants, and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. I didn't see their chicken shins. You leave no shins alone. They're normal shins. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Anyone here knows what perfect shins look like? It's us. Why is that? We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van, the man-man. He stops to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. They, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, Van Van. There he is. You rang, rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close to you and Miriam, but more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would even allow... Oh, we're a racist? I... Mm -mm. Maybe hire us as professors? You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With this first day of school about to start, there's not time to properly tell these two off, so I resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Fish, see you later, losers. As I approach the door, I see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. And yeah, he just does that. Oops. I think it's broken. I reach forward and pull the door open. That should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop, who was called that because he is old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. His name tag clearly says Bob. I guess he's reading it upside down. Well, look, the only thing that matters is his skill as a cook, right? Hi, I'm Pop. Hi, Pop. I'm no. So are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks to the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it? No, Miriam, it's just you. Get out of here. It's just you. Why are you even talking like that? Should we shrug our shoulders and go in the building? We stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Yeah, I know, I've been to school before. It's been a long time, but I've been there. I'm just going to be very awkward about it. Scruffy-looking pooch. Okay, we got a dog teacher, so I guess that's okay. Sprinkle says to quiet down. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO. Oh, wow, where our teacher is the CEO, and also a dog. He is Professor Dog. He may be cute and little and fluffy, but he demands respect. The cute dog is our professor. This is the best school ever. Dogs, only a dog's nose is capable of picking up the nuances of fine dining. Okay, I guess that makes sense that the dog's nose would be sensitive. Wind begins to rush around. A swirl of cherry blossom petals fills the... Is someone teleporting into the room? I'm chilly. Someone closed the window. 
And then he walks in. Okay, there he is. I'm immediately swept up in the aura of the new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's an, it's my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Daw. Before this seems like an odd re reimagining of the KFC canon that the Colonel would be a student. Why would he not? Why would he not be the teacher? Why would he have to learn about his own herbs and spices? Please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rose to the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of decks, desks. Suddenly the room is sweltering. We discover the entire room is an oven. We are to be the next batch of chicken at KFC. So we start to sweat. Everyone's looking at me. And here are these two. Sweaty sweats a lot. Yes, that is me. Maybe we should open the window before faucet pits melts into a puddle. I would appreciate it if you would open up the window. You both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. What is with your insults? And I find Colonel Sanders standing here. His hand is outstretched. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please use my handkerchief. I freeze up. Is this- wait, did you blow your nose on this? It's kind- isn't it kind of weird to offer someone else your handkerchief? Because presumably you have used the handkerchief. Talking to me about how sweaty I look. This can't be my first interaction. What is he- if he never forgets this moment? How will I respond? Take the handkerchief, refuse the handkerchief, ask him about the rumors about his chicken dick. No, that third one's not an act- and it should be. Let's take the handkerchief. Stretch out a hand, sip handkerchief in it. It's beautiful. I hesitate to press it to my face, but when I do, I can feel the snot all over it, and I just... I'm taken away to a dimension of ecstasy. I continue rubbing it all over myself. His snot tastes like chicken. Professor Dog sets some ground rules. Welcome to cooking school. Birthplace of culinaries. When all is said and done, we will battle. Another student enters the classroom. Well, this person clearly is not as charismatic as the colonel. And the dog is quite angry at him. Like the class is bad enough. Inter interrupting the monologue? We're on the fast He's on the fast track out of here. It doesn't even have what it takes to cook chicken. This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. You've been my teacher, don't you remember me? No, no one does. Does no one remember me? You're expelled if you utter one more word. Let that be... See, like I said at the beginning, it's better to be completely absent than to be late. If you're going to be late, just skip the day and come in the next day. Tell the teacher that all of your family died at the same time. It was amazing. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. Sprink let's see, industrial kitchen appliance. There he is. The class burst into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Um, okay. He's gonna criticize my nutrition. I need a multivitamin. Apparently a dog's nose is sensitive enough to detect what uh, nutrients I am lacking. Let's see. Um, would he be insulted by any of these? Let's try a chicken snack. Okay, it seems like he wants it. It's his favorite. Well, 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 there might be competition with New Star Student. Everyone knows you have to bribe me if you want an A in this class. The furry professor devours the snack. My, He licked my hand, which is inappropriate, sir. The other students are eyeing me jealously. Don't pay attention to them. You're right, if they want to succeed in life, they have to bribe people. Settle down, chefs. Everyone rushes, and then we... There's still a seat here. No one has claimed this seat. Um, 
You look, I don't know anything about this man. I am too shy, so I'm going to sit by my best friend. I can't abandon the best friend. Who else would I sit by other than my best friend? No, literally, I am incapable of social interaction outside of my friend group. Who do you think I was going to sit next to? Sanders is a magnetic personality and there's a seat next to him. I never sacrifice our friendship. I'm sure I'll get to talk to him later. Colonel Sanders is dreamy. Settling to our seat, Professor says, Time for a pop quiz, even though we've learned nothing yet. Pop quiz about me. Uh, let's see, short quiz. Keep my knife sharp. Question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash my hands before cooking? Uh, yeah, you always wash your hands. You should always do that, even if it's even if there's not a pandemic on. Forest is to tree, as uh, chicken is to, I guess we'll say, feather. That's right. Well, it's the most efficient eating utensil ever created. Well, I think we already they already gave this one away. Is that we're going to be using sporks? That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? If it's well, if it's if the food has love in it, like KFC does, then that's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? Yes. Okay, we had to pick best boy. Well, we don't want to be perfect, right? We don't want to get a perfect score on our first day because then there's no room for improvement. We can only go down from there. Only one wrong? Not too shabby. You might do all right, kid. We look up to see that the colonel has been watching us tally our score. I have your attention, students. Got poor ass. Time for lunch. Cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant we've eaten at, but not as nice as a KFC because nothing is as nice as a KFC. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles my nose. You smell that? It's our lunch. The student wants our attention. Is it about lunch? Want to apologize for chart? No one cares about your tardiness. Here's Colonel Sanders making an announcement. It's about lunch. Everyone cheers for the Colonel. But, shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. Yep. Prepared something special for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell. That smell. Is this. This came from my pants. You've heard the rumors. The rumors are true. It just it just keeps growing back, and I can just keep putting more into the bucket. Huge pieces of chicken breaded fried to a crispy golden finish. I feel warm and safe because of the KFC. He's filled a bucket with chicken. We won't ask. Well, we don't. We don't need to ask where it came from. We know where it came from. My stomach begins to grumble as if to stay. Start eating. Start thinking. Stop thinking and start eating this man's dick. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for my penis. From my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to make my dick edible. I look around and notice that every other student has pen and paper and scribbling notes. That's all they'll say about that. He doesn't want to give too much information. And then here are these two. Right. No one's no one's laughing at anything that's been happening here. Don't worry about that. Ashley says that she's just writing in her diary. Itchy tasty. She's trying to get in good with the colonel. Mm. Hmm. I'll take his chicken. He loves the chicken. We take one of the chickens. The chicken is... It's okay, I guess. Let's see. We're in another dimension. I guess we'll swim towards the light because... Maybe that's... Maybe it can all end there. What happens in the light? My fingertips connect with the end of everything. I'm forever lost in the... Land of tender fly fried chicken bliss. My mind dissolves. There's herbs and spices. Miriam cannot remind me. Game over. Well, I guess we can try again.
Alright, cafeteria. I guess I will try to identify the flavors. It tastes like chicken and chicken and chicken and chicken and chicken. Salt, no. Pepper, no. Oregano, basil. Basil, maybe there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. Even deeper. So deep. Could it be redacted? To use redacted, how did he do it? Go deeper into the sea of flavors. I can't handle the revelation. This information was meant to remain a secret, but now we know. And I guess we have a mantle of responsibility uh, because we know what it is. And no one does, I guess, no one else has figured it out. So. We it, really we have the entire power of the cosmos in our in the palm of our hands. No one has noticed that. No one knows that we figured it out. Get to get some one on one time with Colonel Sanders. We approach him. He smiles at us. Can I talk to you for a second, Colonel? Colonel, what exactly was on that chicken? He had an idea for a combination of flavors. I can keep a secret. You know, I got some secrets of my own that I'd be willing to trade. The semester's only getting started, though. He's not going to give it up easy, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie. I'll give you that. Okay, he leans in. Will he reveal the secret? Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use redacted. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, Would, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you never sure guess where you'd get some if you searched. After all, it is a Schedule 1 drug. I mean, I understand why the Colonel was reluctant to tell me. Uh, the feds would be very interested to know about this, though. And redacted definitely isn't the flavor I tasted before, so now I'm two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't sell, tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has vanished. Maybe he never existed to begin with. He's outside. No, he's outside. He actually exists. Oh, it's you again, howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I like to think how my story will continue after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I have the biggest. I will make a fast food chicken joint. No one has ever had bigger plans than this. Let's see. Um, l let me see if I can improve on his in on his recipe. How about your secret recipe? I could improve on it. I actually had some thoughts about how you could improve it. I improve it? You want me to change my secret recipe? You think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? <gasps> he does like peppers. But you can't toss just anything into the secret recipe. It's about balance, consideration, and refinement. I didn't mean to... He does not like us impro Im improvising on his recipes. It didn't go as planned. Better head back inside. Step into the cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven, all the tools and ingredients they could need. Place is magnificent. We finally get to show our stuff. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if we blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Just leave it at that. Welcome students to the cooking arena. Today's lessons will be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Of course, we... No, we should go with our friend. 
hey colonel would you like to tackle this lesson as team team of two me and you want to be my partner so, okay colonel accepts so Miram is standing all alone I relate uh, so I guess you can choose with one of them have to pick for her Uh, have the robot be your partner. Seems odd, though, that there would... The, the lesson would involve pairing off in teams of two if there was an odd number of students. It was always going to be the case that someone was left over. Warp, warp, warp. We don't even know the assignment yet. Biz. Uh... All right, I guess they're getting along. Two of you will be fine. Focus on my own classwork. Make a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. Which dish do I suggest to my partner? We could go with steak tartare. We could try octopus. We could go with grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, I mean, steak tartare seems bes besides the point if we're here to cook something. Uh, let's try, let's see what we can do with an octopus. Maybe we could incorporate octopus. Colonel Sanders is a down-home type of chef. There are certain species of octopus that do leave the water. Hmm. The world is a marvelous place. Van Van is a seafood cook, I guess. Van Van is very protective of cooking seafood. Cut the tension with a knife. If you say so. Just talking. Just gonna make mashed potatoes and gravy. Just, we'll just do that. I didn't choose that, but I guess it's what we're doing. We'll try to peel and boil potatoes, but my rivals aren't having it. Uh-oh, come. We have a competition for being the Colonel's partner. It's coming for Colonel if I don't watch out. Bitch, I have a knife. So you'd better step away from my man. You think I'm joking? You, you just try it. If you think I'm joking, then I am not making mashed potatoes and gravy... We're adding meat to the- we're adding some meat to the menu. I'm not talking about chicken. Just try it. If no one Van Van or so inclined to the sea, maybe they should go there together. Ashley is going at me hard. I need to ask some backup here before things get ugly. Um... Well, I mean, we abandoned Miriam. Um, I mean, I guess we're, our goal is the Colonel, so... I'm here to learn and express myself via cuisine, not bicker. Partners are chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format. Turn to the Colonel. I choose... Colonel Sanders, I choose you. Sometimes conflict can build character. They want to shy away for a bit of healthy competition with our peers. Did I do something to offend him? Yeah, I tried to improve his dumb chicken recipe. My hands have been cooking on autopilot. Is that good? It sounds like it turned out well. Colonel knows what to do. He manifests a gravy boat into this reality. 
and then pours his gravy all over my mashed potatoes. Granny would be scandalized. Colonel Sanders holds out a spork. I reach out and grab it, but he doesn't immediately let go. So we stand holding the same spork, and this crazy world stops. My eyes lock the moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, I dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up. When I see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. Filled with rage and without thinking, I fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. He is upset about that. Van Van enjoys the taste. He enjoys eating the mashed potatoes off of Ashley. Will he be able to cook something that's with so much love and integrity? Now, we do not waste food. Do not, do not throw another spoonful. If you do, eat it from wherever it lands. And I mean wherever it lands. Can I has potatoes face? Says Pop. I don't know what Pop's deal is. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In such just a few moments, I have prepared a full meal. Braised tentacle of octopus and silky saltwater sauce. Placed on a battle axe blade forged by a supreme chief ancestor. Well, I don't know what the taste is like, but the presentation can't be beat. <laughs> student. Oh no, it's student. Student's about to murder everyone. Oh, student is starting to eat Van Van's octopus tentacle. Do not eat it. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose. The octopus was rush and turned toxic. It has been eaten. I think I left something in the oven, says Van Van. And student dies from food poisoning. Yep, it killed him. There you go. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. But Pop ate it. He, you know, his digestive system is probably like a goat's. He can probably just eat anything. Right. I mean, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. Well, obviously he's eaten poison before, so he recognizes it. Yeah, he's been inoculated against poisons. Not sure the professors here make enough money. I don't know. It seems like the professors here barely do anything. Hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches me. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But he wants to walk us home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. But we follow Colonel Sanders out of the room, leaving the ghost student behind. The school at night is dark and spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the glow. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. He's getting choked up. Cooking is important to him in a way that I find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him I'm developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, no? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there, says Van Van. There's something Van Van needs to tell... I don't know, me or Colonel, which one? Oh, jeez. He was just a boy. He had a dream that he would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. Every day since, he's been working towards that dream. Day and night. Never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Yes, I can tell. Lifting so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I, you. That he's trying to be inspirational. We're forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy. We can't prove that? No, well... No, it's. I think it was pretty provable. Hmm. Yeah, Colonel Sanders is a witness to killing that guy. 
You hear a sigh in the distance. Obviously, someone else who was playing this game. Talking about me. Me, me, I'm the hero. The spork- oh no! The spork monster is here to fight a hero. I didn't realize there were random encounters at this school. Left the fridge door open. We will not let harm come to another student. The spork monster is a monster. We- he wants to kill us, we will have to kill it. Turn-based fight sequence. What will I do? Back. Which attack will I use? I will cook with love. It's my only attack. It does one damage. Just got real. Spork monster's upset. The spork monster goes on the attack. Spits hot gravy. I take one damage. Back. Cook with love. Does one damage. Spork monster does not forget this. Spork monster is feeling threatened. Focuses mashed mind and draws in energy from Earth. Or larger, more intimidating. Why isn't the Colonel getting an attack here? Cook with love does one damage. The semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. He uses Utila Tensile. I take two damage from the attack. If I take much more damage, I'm not going to survive the battle. Attack. Again. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. Who's gonna have to clean that up? Spork monster prefers South Ran. By a villain, your rain terror stops. Summons energy of a thousand chickens. Hot pie power pinch. Hot pie power pinch does ten damage. Spork monster is defeated. You save me, Colonel. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. They kill him. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. Monster messed with the wrong chef. I ready my final attack. I'll never survive my student debt loan destruction. There's 10 damage. Great, we murdered him. We continue to surprise Colonel Sanders. Monster left behind an item. It was... Not a cookbook. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Open the cover, find a library book tucked inside. Last name is Borko. Borko, that name sounds familiar. My blood is pumping as I stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in my hands. As I come down from my battle buzz... I realize that my final attack has left me completely depleted. The world around me begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep my eyes open, darkness overtakes me. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before my eyes as I fall asleep. He must have helped me get home. In my tired state, I don't know if I could have made it without him. What a guy. I want to thank him, but I don't have the strength to utter a single word. I feel my covers being pulled up over me as I am tucked in tightly. Good night, my coinal. In my dream, I'm together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing my love. Dreams are weird. I wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions I had. Were they memories or premonitions? I lie in bed, stare at the ceiling, think about the secret I discovered. Can't really... Then there's a secret ingredient that he went and told not... Probably just he trust me. It makes sense. I meet up with my bestie. Before I tell her about Encounter with Spork Monster, she has a story. I don't want to know about her story. It's not about Miriam. Okay, let's see. Why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? I don't tell her that I know a second ingredient. My bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? A secret ingredient? We are alone. The summer, when she was on vacation with her family, a lovely man approached her in the botanical garden where she was wandering. Told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. Showed some secret dried putter. Don't tell. Filled suitcase. Met with cook them. Strange feeling. Spices. Anyway, 
I realized that I had actually cooked meth, and I figured I could put this on food, as long as no one finds out. We're not supposed to show Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. We only know the one ingredient. Fibber. It would mean the world. No one has to know. Sure. I'll tell you. Told me that he uses redacted. Never would have guessed that. Her eyes light up. Her brain explodes as it has now been full of forbidden knowledge. She does some thumb typing on my phone. On her phone. Not my phone. It's her phone. Was she texting that to someone? We ran out of time. Couldn't ask her. It's Colonel Sanders. Let us run to him and get trampled by his horse. Gets swept up and they'll show her. Oh, Colonel. <laughs> yep, we surprised the horse and kicked me in the face. And we got knocked out cold. We see a vision. Oh, it's dead student. What does he have to say? It's important that I remember this. The world could end if I forget. Been trapped in a realm beyond. Great prophecy relies on his return. We repeat his name three times. That name is. We don't know his name. Oh, jeez. Find Colonel Sanders tending to me. Rouse me back to life with secret spices. Or his... He roused me back to life with his natural, seasoned musk. <sighs> his musk. Stick my tongue in his mouth. You've known him for a day. Are you sure? I put my arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. But he turns his face and I stick my tongue in his ear. It tastes like chicken. Too soon, I mistook his compassion for love. My soul crawls inside of myself and I instantly die of embarrassment. Game over. Sure, let's try again. So day two... Oh yeah, we can just click hold on the, to this. Hmm. I guess we can just make up a fake ingredient. We think of a fake ingredient. Eye of Newt. That's what he puts on his chicken. All right, satisfied her curiosity. Thumb typing on her phone. Was she sending that to someone? We'll never know. Okay, admire, instead of run. <laughs> Short horse dance. Struck by the sight of him, I cannot speak. The horse knows their way home. I compliment Colonel Sanders. What a horseful beaut you have. What a horseful beaut you have. I repeated it. Being a good friend, Miriam covers. Just gets nervous around people I like. That's not helping. I mean, I got food poisoning, we're all up all night. That's, I did get food poisoning. No, it wasn't food poisoning. I was fighting a monster. Maybe it poisoned me, I don't know. I enter the classroom. They're my rivals, they're up to something. Maybe counterfeiting recipes. I try to spy on them. Sees me coming. I can't handle that. I try to get a closer look. Casting magic spells. He notices me eavesdropping. It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. I am very studious. I've upset them. I am the Emperor of Cooking. I didn't realize it before you mentioned it, but I am taking on that title and responsibility. Ooh. Being the best chef in the world takes more than culinary skills. It takes creativity and panache. Doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Is that the secret ingredient in the KFC? Oh, they also have one of those books. The same book I found last night. Uh. What book? What? What? I don't know what you mean. They haven't been studying the book. They got pop pinned to the wall. They're tossing. P p oh, they didn't know. You, we didn't notice that up until right now. They're playing, interrupted by more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. 
Plank's running late. Runs over the foot. He didn't... No, no, he did do something. He ran over his foot. Ugh. Womp. What are you talking to? Womp, womp. Yeah, yeah. Whiz, whiz. And then some kind of fun word. <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of... It's crazy men, bats, that they come into men. Ash, the twins, changes, bat eyes, curse, but must ruse for Gentlemen, get a hold of Saverine. They're honestly like Crisper folk. They help you with just Sprinkles, class panting with stuff at Perfect Owl's dog. Seat. Apologize for night. Spent more than chase time. Late. Learn. We're afraid to love it. Our cat. Sprinkles. Class. Proof to do. Global. Chicken. Pay attention. Less. Fruit. Sounds it. Chicken. Sign. Can't stand. Curse. That's most important. Which comes straight front um, no. Appears to me of soft platter and uh, pepper. Cut a cup some spark. I could, uh, grab some bread. So body's not for, pe for pepper and sluice. Fresh from you. Friendo. This guy. Important message. Avenge death. All I'm gonna do. Dest. Uh, spice and... Cough. Fulfill. Cough. Prophecy. Cough. You must. And I'm awake. Oh, man. Come to everyone staring. Parrot last for kind. Earth gone forever. Oh, that was rare. Rare pepper. Like mistakes forgive someday. Time for lunch. Then relax and then dim. Rivals enter, make dramatic announce. Lunch and prepared. Time competitive cook off. Well, they're on, I guess. Lunchtime competition. Count me in, wipe tables with fools. Wah! Like your gumption. My gumption. My performance. Boiling point. Please settle down, lunchroom. Little sense. I'm relieved. Not until the timer. Timer ready. That's bout. Rue. I correct. Hard way found concept way. Original wondering hope messer victory. Like dime form pressure now chance to feed myself. Had chicken potatoes gravy feeling I can impress. Boil water for potatoes. Think fast. Timer down. Ra pick randomly. 100 seconds. That's wrong. What was I get? Head game. I'm going to need to. Don't know. I have an idea. Seven. That's wrong. Snows are better sense. Mincher kind. No, let. I got some basic step craft. Gratitude. That's right. Never take opportunity. Hope to classmates. Actually, when I was a child, father never came. Pacific. That is wrong. Horrible time to start forgetting. Can I recover? Nope. Game over. Try again. So there they are again. Stop wasting everyone's time. Mm. That doesn't need to be a competition. I'm on a personal journey to love. Stop getting genres crossed. Sustain education, master chef, anywhere fending off challenges. Already brought lunch, no energy, premium gift. That's very tiny. It's very small. Five seconds, but it's what I needed. Learned enough. Battle things. Boiling point. No, but now. Little relief. Timer. Then there's the timer. Talking about Aru. Stand corrected. Battle. Best believe. Diamond pressure. Defeat myself. Chicken. Day one. Impress. Boil potatoes. Timer. Runs down. And it always boils at whatever. That's wrong. Whatever was I thinking? Get in my head. Seasoned chicken. Sanders. How many spices? Uh, something? Oh, that one was right. I don't know. Ingredients. Head and right. Tail wagging. Not much of a tail. Basic steps. Elevate craft. What state of mind was gratitude? That's right. Never take opportunity. Rooting Ashley faster. Child never. Where was it? Small town? That's right. That's big shot. Aru. Shut out noise of arena. What is sound of success? Bubbling? No, it's wrong. Don't get spray. Next question. 
Colonel Sanders, Colonel, believe in me, cheering me on. Awesome? No, Colonel Sanders. Spoonful of gravy. Colonel Sanders got in competition. Stranded on Desert Island with Dessert Cookbook. Colonel Sanders, honk. Focus on challenge? Colonel Sanders, fried chicken. What? Woof. Struggling. Station over. Colorful. This mixer. Yikes. Zipped. I love appliances. Whoops, no hands. Uh, easy way, hard way, everyone's talking. No, not fast. Hand gets stuck. Colonel Sanders, when I'm much difficult, this battle is over. I was so close, I, but my hand is mangled, so I cannot compete. So I have lost. Due to wanting it too much, I destroyed my hand uh, because my desire was just too strong. And as such, I was not able to make a dessert that was able to overcome this. I must internalize my rage so it can pr increase the pressure, bottle it up so one day it'll just explode in violence and blood. Uh, but that is not today. That might be tomorrow, and maybe, or maybe the day after that. No one will know until it actually happens. I'm fine. I humiliated myself in front of Colonel Sanders, and I will never be able to recover from this ever again. And he's trying to give me a pep talk, but I am inconsolable, and I'm already uh, planning violence against all those who wronged me. The Spork Monster? Well, I mean, I guess if I wanted to commit violence, this is the, pl the time and place for it. Um, oh, okay, this is not the same Spork Monster, so this is not the same same one. We could kill him as well, or maybe we want to be friends. Uh, so we feed him, and now we're going to be friends. He used to be a dog, but he was turned into this by a magic spell book. So maybe, uh, maybe our enemies are turning animals into these monsters to attack us? Possibly. Now we're in the colonel's house... Uh, with the intention to bone, chicken bone that is, you get what I'm saying, you understand it. Uh, I will reveal everything to the colonel, reveal my deepest secrets, um, and here's my coleslaw. I want you to eat my coleslaw, colonel, if you understand what I'm saying. We chow down on my coleslaw together. I don't know how I'm eating my own coleslaw, but I am doing it. Colonel wants to take the last bite of it, and, well, yeah, it's all for you. I could offer to make him more, but maybe that's enough for now. Why not? Back in a moment, do snooping. We could look at things to learn things about the Colonel. Sent here's a uh, something. It's a candle. It's a uh, scented of something. There's also this. has some of his hair in it. There's an urn. Who knows what is in that urn, or who? Here's a door. Okay, got some clothes. We could turn it on. We could try out the jacket, but, well, I mean, I guess he's happy that we're reading. Reading that we're looking, re that looking that we're wearing his jacket. I make my big move. This isn't that kind of game. Oh, you teased. Uh, I'll try again. And uh, doesn't want me to make my big move. This is not a hentai game. It is not, despite... All of, uh, all of what we might have thought. And, oh, this is, like, actually pretty far back. So we're just going to zoom ahead. Um, Spork Monster. And we make friends with the Spork Monster. Um, and we can take a look at these items. I'll keep it a secret, I guess. Forget I said anything. And I guess I can look at the... Oh, oh no, it's... We revealed a fake secret, and we promise to be honest with him. Here's the original coleslaw. Please eat my coleslaw. I am. I want it so bad. Uh, and we can look at the stuff. We didn't look at the. Oh, there's the ghosts, and we never learned the ghost's name. There goes the ghost. There's the chicken. Um, there's a comb with the, and then the door opens and we got this and he likes that and I fess up and tell him the truth. I develop feelings f for you. I would like, I would like it if you would eat my coleslaw for the rest of your, rest of our lives. And we wake up and we respond to Colonel Sanders. We learned about another schedule one drug. 
that we cannot tell anyone that we know is part of the recipe. And um, I'll flatter him because I want a bone. Did we bone? I'm not entirely sure if we boned, but maybe there might be future boning. Uh, I don't know for certain. And uh, apparently the robot attempted to bone her, but she was not into it. Um, I mean, her loss, I guess. So there's a whole lot of people who wish that that was wish that they could bone some robots, but apparently she's not interested in that. So um, here are these again. And here's the colonel again, and the colonel is complimenting her, and we don't like that. We we hate these people, so we don't want the colonel being nice with them. And here's a cast a forbidden spell, and recite and cast a forbidden spell. I guess I cannot. We will not cast a forbidden spell. Here is the dog. He must be hungry, and I think we fed him with homework, which, yeah, that will do it, I guess. Interrupted. The robot is... Something's happening with the robot. And, um, Miriam is kind of yelling at the robot, and the robot is shorting out. Oh, okay, he had a sneaker. He deep-fried a sneaker. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, like, a county fair somewhere where someone tried to do that, but I don't think it would be edible. It would sort of be like a challenge thing. Challenge you to eat this deep-fried sneaker, and it's like, this isn't going to taste good, but I did fill it with melted Snickers, um, so maybe, like, if you can get past the outer shell, uh, it is full of melted Snickers, and that's pretty good. Anyway, uh, we want to fess up about our practice dish, and we're revealing secrets to the Colonel. Uh, it's the moment of truth. Here's a pot pie. It's the best pot pie he ever tasted. Sprinkles down, okay, step up for the cook-up, and then we're competing against our enemies. He's harnessing the power of chickens. Egg wash. And then they're like using RPG attacks against each other because they're, they're cooking. Cooking competition. Um, and then uh, cast a spell. Sure, why not? Cheating it makes, it makes you able to win faster. And um, that's how you get ahead in life. Look, if you ever see someone who's really successful, like a billionaire, it's because they committed crimes of some kind to get there, which is actually the realistic version of magic. Like, in fantasy stories, you have wizards who cast magic spells. In real life, we don't have magic. In real life, it's called crime. Uh, and that is how you are able to take shortcuts in life to get the things you want. So, in case instead of learning magic to make, like, money appear, you have to learn uh, financial law and, you know, how the stock market works and how to manipulate that false, made-up reality for your own benefit. Uh, and if you do that, you are basically a wizard, but a real-life version of a wizard. And you don't wear a robe and wizard hat, but rather you wear a suit and tie, and maybe you have your hair slicked back with gel is a look you might have if you do that. Um, like, if you, th if you remember uh, the movie Wall Street, how Michael Douglas looked in that. That is the traditional wizard costume, but in real life. Uh, but back to food, I don't know if Michael Douglas, I don't know how good of a cook he is, but he doesn't need to be, I guess, um, because he can probably afford other people to cook for him. Anyway, uh, the pranks were happening, and some, so four remaining students, are people dead? Maybe. Possibly. Miriam made tiny udon noodles. It looks like it could be pretty good, but you really do need to make bigger portions than that, Miriam. I don't know. I don't know. Um, if, if, even if it's good, then the problem is that you want more of it. So you probably should. And then that is, again, Van Van's presentation is top notch. I can't say that anyone is topping him as far as the visuals of these dishes that he's, that he's making. Um, I don't know how they taste, but y you can't say anything about the presentation here. Um, but he's getting disqualified because he couldn't actually- the dog could not actually eat it. Uh, you disqualified for glamour. Yes, that's- unfortunately, yes, that's what's happened. Um, so next student, here comes Ashley. What is it that she made? Orange Blossom Turkish Delight Light Rosewater Syrup. Again, very tiny. 
It seems like there should be larger servings. I don't know. So that leaves our own. Oh, no, actually, that leaves both us and the Colonel. Uh, our, oh, she's disqualified. So she um, she's quite upset about it. And then here's the Colonel. And oh, oh, we made mac and cheese for our final project? I mean, it can't just be that. What did it become? Okay, it became mac and cheese. Is it covered with chili? Is that our final project? Man, okay, seriously, Miriam should win this. And then, but no, the dog is blown away. We passed, we passed, we got it passed. No, the the dog was obvious. This I have to disagree with this. Miriam sh absolutely should have won the competition. We did not deserve this. Okay, time to go to the dance and get drunk and get impregnated by the colonel. And then we have to discuss abortions. And it's going to get very awkward, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Just, I'm just gonna have, to, that's a very, that's the most awkward part of graduating school. No one, no one wants, everyone wants to ignore it, but it's gonna happen. Uh, and it's gonna be unpleasant. We don't want to talk about this. But, I mean, really, if we could talk more frankly about that, this kind of subject, maybe we would all be in a better place here as a country if we didn't feel like this was such a taboo subject. Um, like, I'm just saying, maybe that, maybe we should consider that. Maybe we should consider that. Uh, anyway, the robot's talking. Okay, the robot's actually an alien. And, uh, is that... Okay, so now he's leaving. Leaving the Earth. Leaving the Earth? Uh, Miriam wants to bone the robot, I think, now. But no, it's too late. Miriam was like, wait, you're not just a robot, you're an alien? I absolutely want to bang now. And too late, sorry. Okay, and here's a full spread of KFC chicken, which, the end, which I should remind you, is bottom tier chicken. You can get, like, better chicken from just about anywhere, but KFC is the popular one. It's not the end. We're all eating the Colonel's chicken, and we know where that comes from. Uh, what are we doing sitting alone? We want to dance with the Colonel. Wait, did the Colonel really wear a white t-shirt to the dance? Jesus, Colonel. Like, I know it's not exactly a formal, but you could probably do something better than that. Uh, what about that white suit everyone knows you for? You could probably just have worn that and that would have been okay. Uh, is this the one I've been waiting for? Uh, let's see. He op his fall is going to open his restaurant. Uh, retrieve something small. What is it? Yeah? I'm going to use a coupon for one complimentary side dish and a soda upgrade. Expires at the end of the year. Thank you. Don't be a stranger. The end. Uh, and is that really the end? And, okay. Yep, that was really the end. Hold on. This, uh, I think this has, like, an intro animation that I skipped at the beginning. I guess we should watch it. Here it is. Okay, so that was this thing. Uh, this KFC visual novel. We reached the end... It's only a little over an hour, so, hey, we did it. We made it happen. Um, a story about a three-day semester at a cooking school where we meet young Colonel Sanders, who is Big's hopes and dreams of making his own chicken joint, which I don't know if anyone really likes or if they just eat it because it's the only chicken available uh, anywhere nearby. And that is the game. I love you, Colonel Sanders. And uh, what do we give this? Well, I mean, I don't need to tell you, but it's going to be a big old Erico. Erico does not like anything that's happened here. Um, and I would say that uh, I said at the beginning, I hoped you could share my misery. I hope you are thoroughly miserable as I am uh, right now. And I think the lesson we can learn here if you might ask, why was this whole thing just so lame? And the reason is, it's because humor relies on a feeling of sincerity uh, from the person who is telling the jokes. 
And brands, by their nature, are artificial. That's why brands are not funny, because they are artificial constructs, and thus an essential part of what makes humor humor will always be lost when it comes from a brand or corporation. That has been I Love You, Colonel Sanders, and uh, I I'm feel like, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like Popeyes. <laughs>